runtime we'll see how uh, it processes our request uh, and it, it, we will go deep into in the internals what classes and objects really are being created and how the request goes through uh, this whole pipeline uh, I created this whole diagram uh, when I was uh, going through uh, the internals I was doing my own kind of uh, testing uh, and a lot of reading did help to uh, image this whole diagram so w when a request comes to our worker process uh, the, the main object that takes the hold is HTTP runtime uh, one of the interface we need to remember is IHTTP handler this is the m one of the major interface that's being implemented by most of the classes within a runtime namely uh, HTTP runtime, HTTP application factory, HTTP application, uh, and then our resource specific handlers, our pages and controls even. So when uh, the HTTP runtime uh, receives the request, so m it, 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 the request arrives at process request. So what it does, it initializes uh, the, some of the internal objects like cache manager, a file system monitor. It also creates an empty uh, HTTP context, and basically this uh, context uh, it have uh, the object of HTTP request, which have all the information about the client. It also have a special uh, creates the this specialized text writer for response. Uh, the request uh, is being forwarded to HTTP application, uh, so HTTP application factory. Uh, what it does it has a uh, well, kind of collection of app domains so if you remember now this is where we usually tie our web application uh, and th this app domain contains a HTTP application pool and this pool contains uh, our HTTP application so when the request arrives at HTTP application factory it checks if the app domain is loaded uh, so if you remember there is a no request and our uh, applications are not uh, doing processing we usually unload the app domain so it checks if the app domain is loaded or not if it's not loaded it goes and compiles global.asax if required uh, so then after that it creates an app domain creates HTTP application pool object uh, using the context information we have and then uh, it uh, this whole HTTP application pool resides in our app domain so HTTP application factory gets an HTTP application object from the pool and then it forwards the request to HTTP application uh, now remember this HTTP application object it implements a uh, IA sync HTTP handler so the request from our HTTP application factory returns immediately so it forwards the request to HTTP application returns immediately so that it can serve other uh, clients from here onwards starts HTTP uh, sorry ASP.NET runtime so the HTTP application it uh, figures out the resource type like it's a web page or it's a uh, web service kind of a request or it's a simple uh, handler so for based on that uh, request type it creates page handler factory or it creates HTTP remoting factory uh, handler factory or simple handler factory web service handler factory whatever it requires to create so this handler factory uh, also implements a uh, HTTP handler so it checks if the page uh, is already uh, available or it uh, is being updated so it has to compile it again so in case it has to compile it uh, it forwards this request to the app domain to compile this uh, web page and then uh, the compiled object is being placed in our ASP uh, de underscore default underscore ASP in temporary directory so when it's being compiled uh, our resource specific handler factory forwards this request to our uh, page or, or control uh, and then uh, we render our content from here 
so then the request goes back to a uh, handler factory then to HTTP application uh, this is a very very abstract overview uh, of how this whole runtime works uh, but it, there are a lot more uh, details uh, in uh, in depth understandings of like how uh, what modules uh, are uh, process for example process the authorization information credentials uh, ACLs and everything there are so many modules uh, they have their own uh, way to process th the requests and how do web different web configs uh, participate at different levels but this is a very general overview so it gives uh, an abstract overview uh, how if for example uh, in my scenario I had to implement uh, one of the video uh, streaming servers so this kind of re uh, knowledge or experience did really help me a lot so I can basically use uh, most of the objects from here if I have to make a streaming server or any other uh, web server so I can use those objects I can follow the pattern and get my uh, stuff done very quickly instead of uh, I start from scratch uh, so it's a good thing to know this and to uh, reuse as much as possible uh, this whole uh, uh, diagram uh, is based on uh, my knowledge based on ASP.NET 2.0 and ASP.NET 3.5 uh, I'll surely update uh, this uh, based on 4.0 and 4.5 uh, I'm sure there won't be a big enough change but uh, I'll have to look into it so I'll look into it and I'll update it accordingly uh, do let me know if you just missed something uh, or, or you think there is something already in in there is very important and I missed it and please do let me know thanks a lot